No matter what DCC system you have, it's very important to have enough feeders on your track. And let me tell you why. Hi, I'm Tom Kovicek and this is Tom's Trains and Things. This channel was created to help other modelers who are in need of guidance in pursuing their dream of building a model railroad. And let me tell you about feeders in the DCC system. No matter what DCC system you have, even if you have DCC++ EX, it's extremely important to make sure that you have enough feeders. Now on my layout right now, I only have feeders connected right here. and right back there. Now this layout goes all the way around my garage. It's approximately 50 foot double track. But I only have it in the, those two places because I was in a hurry to get my trains up and running. I wanted to get them running and I neglected to put more feeders in. Now I ran wire, I run my bus wire all the way up to here and I ran it over to one of the drop downs over here but I didn't put any more feeders in and I ran into a problem the other night. Now I usually run trains during my live stream and I'll run in maybe a couple of hours beforehand before the live stream and my live stream will run a couple of hours so that's about four hours of running I've been doing that for you know about a month now uh, constantly running them like that I didn't have a problem until last night and then that's when everything went to hell most of my track is soldered I have flex track all the way around but on the curves the flex tracks are soldered and there's only a couple of joints on here that are not soldered now usually what I do is when I go around to do my feeders I'll cut gaps in it to you know compensate for the expansion and contraction I haven't done that yet but I ran into problems let me show you what I'm talking about here Well, the most obvious answer would be that the locomotive is stopping at an insulated frog, but that's not the case in any of these situations. It's on a piece of flex track where there is no frog to mess things up. This is only a portion of the stops from the locomotives. So you can imagine how frustrating this would be in a 45 minute period when I'm trying to record something. I even changed locomotives on both tracks and that did not solve the problem at all. So the only conclusion I came to was I have a lack of feeders throughout my model railroad and I'm losing conductivity on my tracks. Having some technical difficulties. I was recording a video about 45 minutes long and in that 45 minutes I had 20 some instances of where the locomotive stopped where I had to give it an 050 push because of losing power now you would think that it would be on a frog on an insulated frog but the frogs that I have here in the two different areas I have them powered so they're not insulated but 
where the locomotive was stopping wasn't on those frogs or wasn't on any other frogs on the turnouts that I don't have powered yet. They were in in the middle of the flex track. So apparently at some point after the locomotive goes over the joint it would lose power. So that's my story about why you need those feeders. I did a video about five years ago on on feeders and where to put them, how to space them, and what wires to use and everything and I'll show you right here or it'll be in the description also. And there are standards by NMRA and the different manufacturers of the different gauges of wire to use in the different scales for your model railroad from Z scale all the way up to G tells you how what wires to use and how far to space them. I have links on my website where you can find just about anything so check that out also. But anyway let me run some trains on here for a little bit and show you what it should be like How's that? I straightened it out, finally. I kept talking to the minimum on this one.
So, until the next time, we'll see you.